All right, here's a grade three tumor. So this is your typical anaplastic astrocytoma. These are in a little bit older folks. So now the average age is up in the 40s. And they're located in similar places as the grade twos. And on imaging, so now we're starting to see signs of enhancement. So sort of the classic dis description will be a ring enhancement pattern with a central uh, area representing necrosis and surrounding edema. So you can see a good example of that here in this coronal view. Um, again, this is a T1 sequence with contrast. So ring enhancement uh, with likely surrounding edema. Now remember, all these classic uh, pictures I'm showing you, they're not diagnostic. They are classic, but not diagnostic. So always re remind yourself to include a good differential diagnosis when you're looking at these MRI images. So as all of you guys know, you know, this could look very similar to a secondary metastatic tumor. It could look similar to an abscess. So again, um, don't forget about uh, uh, differential diagnosis uh, when you're looking at imaging. Histopathologically, so these tumors are gonna be much more densely hypercellular. They're go there's gonna be much more obvious nuclear atypia, increased mitosis, um, prominent nucleoli, and might even see multinucleated uh, uh, tumor cells. This is a little bit of what they look like. So you can see a bit more uh, hypercellular, but what's really now different is this remarkable um, cellular and nuclear atypia. Uh, you're also gonna see uh, more mitotic activity and uh, more vascularity there. So again, uh, these will be positive for GFAP vitamin S10. KI67 index is gonna be a little bit higher. So now we're kind of up in the 10% range. The genetics are now also gonna start getting much more uh, diverse and interesting. So these are a few of very well-established uh, mutations seen in grade three tumors. These have been known now for uh, many, many years including uh, TP53 mutations, P16, RB, P10 mutations, CDK4 amplification, chromosomal abnormalities in these. And now we're starting to see this EGFR amplification. Of course, there's many other growth factor um, pathways involved as well. And this is gonna really take off in that grade four tumor. So now prognosis is different. Prognosis is much worse. It's uh, now these tumors are gonna be treated like a malignant tumor and require adjuvant therapies and um, uh, gonna be treated the same as uh, grade four uh, GBMs. Okay, so lastly, here's an example of uh, grade four. So this is uh, your glioblastoma. So like that pie chart I showed you, these are the most common astrocytic uh, tumors. Uh, peak incidence is going to be an older population. The average age is about 64. These are a little bit more common in, in men. And again, they're more common supratemporally, especially in the frontal lobes. On imaging, uh, these are, look similar to the grade three tumors, but there are signs to suggest more aggressive uh, behavior. So it's going to be a little bit more irregular shaped lesions. You still have this peripheral ring-like enhancement. You'll have this central zone of necrosis. And over here on this T2 sequence, you can really see how uh, much edema these uh, malignant tumors can incite. Uh, to give you uh, another example, uh, I have a current patient uh, who came in about two weeks ago, walked in with a headache, and uh, he has um, a malignant glioma that's centered in his ancillary lobe, but it actually spreads out into most of his hemisphere. And he's got so much edema that he's got remarkable midline shift. And within days, he started herniating without any sort of intervention. And that led us to a quick uh, hemicraniectomy. So these tumors can change quick and you have to be very aggressive at uh, taking care of these folks. I thought this uh, specimen is a good illustration of how uh, infiltrated these tumors are. So you can imagine that on the MRI, 
this central area of necrosis is probably where your, your focus is going to be on that MRI, but you can easily see how infiltrated these tumors are and how much those tumor cells spread beyond that focus, even to the contralateral uh, hemisphere. All right, uh, so uh, to wrap it up, histopathologically, again, diffusely infiltrating, very hypercellular, poorly differentiated cells, lots of pleomorphic tumor uh, cells, very high mitotic rate. Now you see a lot more microvascular proliferation and necrosis that's called pseudopalisading. The immune histochemistry is a bit more variable, but you might see uh, some GFAP positivity. Uh, KI67 is much higher now, up in the sort of 20% range. And again, the prognosis is very poor despite all the therapies with an overall survival of about one and a half years. So this is uh, what it looks like. So cells are much more uh, dense, much more pleomorphic. Here's a good example of that classic pseudopalisading necrosis that I mentioned. Uh, these tumors characteristically are going to have uh, hypervascularity. So here's a good example of that. And um, sometimes they'll have uh, some unusual cell types. So here's just one example that's called a giant cell glioblastoma um, that has these big uh, unusual odd giant cells and multinucleated uh, type cells. The interesting thing here is that if you diagnose that, they do have a little bit better prognosis than the general population of glioblastoma. These aggressive tumors can have sort of sarcomatous uh, transformation. It looks a little bit like that. And again, the GFAP is positive, but it's more variable, not quite as uh, dense as in those other more differentiated uh, gliomas. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.